Great, welcome back. So in the first part of this series, we went through some definitions uh, in the world of Zorro. We defined terms and highlighted the differences between certain terms that are used inter interchangeably between Zorro and other trading environments, particularly in FX and CFD trading. Some of those terms include lot, lot amount, lot size, etc. We defined uh, certain variables such as commission, roll long, roll short, etc., 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 that are part of the assetsfix.csv file that we're going to open up here shortly, and uh, what, the, what they should be interpreted as, in what number of contracts are they calculated, how do you differentiate between uh, spreads and execution condition data that you are provided by DarwinX, how do you apply this information to your assets and transaction costs configuration in Zorro. And is there a way for this information to be pulled directly from the broker via API, as opposed to having to manually enter all of this information uh, into your assets fix configuration? So the answer to that is yes and no, mostly yes, partially no. And we'll go through that in a moment as to what information is available via the API when you're using Zorro and DarwinX and what isn't and how you can uh, add that information by simply taking a look at what assets and spreads and associated swap conditions prevail on the assets and spreads page at DarwinX. Um, here on this page, you have two distinctions between retail and professional um, conditions. And then those are further subdivided into category by asset class. So you have currencies and Forex, indices, commodities, uh, US stocks, and cryptocurrencies. We'll come back to this in a moment when we go into configuration. Now, in the first tutorial, we also talked about uh, there being a way to do a small exercise to wipe the slate clean and essentially set up your assets fix.csv file for only the assets that you are interested in. Uh, and at the same time, populate that file partially automatically uh, via the API, and then fill in the blanks where necessary. So this can be achieved through uh, a few ways. One of those will be via writing a script in C, in Light C. First, let's take a look at our default Zorro installation. This is an installation of Zorro 2.2, and we've deployed the MetaTrader 4 bridge onto a demo account that is connected to a DarwinX um, MetaTrader terminal. And here we've got our Zorro Expert Advisor running on a chart, uh, the EURUSD, irrelevant what asset it is that it's running on as long as the, uh, the EA is deployed. And then we've taken the demo account uh, ID or login and placed it here in Zorro and uh, we'll be using that to connect to the broker to retrieve all the information that we're going to use to configure our assets fix.csv for backtesting purposes. Right, so in a default installation of Zorro, you'll have a few folders once you enter your Zorro folder. Uh, these will include history and log that are the subject of this conversation here in this tutorial. If you go inside history, you'll find a fair few um, assets files. And, uh, these will be assets Z10, assets IB, for all the other brokers that are supported in um, Zorro, as well as some of the trading strategies that ship with Zorro. Of these files, the one of interest to you is assetsfix.csv, which by default will come pre-populated with information from some other broker um, installation or connection that was probably used in configuring this file. I'm not entirely sure how these values were generated, uh, but they're certainly not values that were taken from DarwinX since we haven't even connected this instance of Zorro to the broker yet. So you'll find that this information persists in this assetsfix.csv file in a default installation. Now, what we're going to do is first create a copy, which I already have, of this file. So we'll just create a copy to hold all our previous information. And uh, for this exercise, we're going to go into our assetsfix.csv file and assume we have no knowledge of anything. And we're simply going to, for this exercise, wipe the slate clean. We're literally going to delete everything. And now we have no assets fix.csv. We just have the variable names that form the columns, and that's it. So essentially, we have nothing to backtest with. The next thing we're going to do is go into uh, our script editor and write a little script in Light C. And you'll find that it takes maybe three lines to write it, wherein we'll do a few things. So first, let's do that. Let's go to this script menu over here, scroll down to New Script, and that'll open a default um, 
new strategy template. We're going to delete all of this stuff in here and keep the run function. Inside this run function, we're going to write maybe three lines of code um, to grab a few assets of interest to us. So let's go back to the assets and spreads page and pick certain assets for us to populate this um, script with. In this case, we're on the currencies and Forex page. So let's say we're going to pick a few currencies and we're going to pick a stock or something. So let's pick the Apple stock and let's pick some of the majors and use those to create the script. Now, the purpose of this script will be to connect to the broker and essentially uh, print the latest closing price. But in the background, what will happen is that because we're running this script, Zorro will automatically fetch the information pertaining to the assets that we include here for whatever purpose in our script and download all that important information that is necessary uh, inside assetsfix.csv and it's going to store it somewhere and we'll go there shortly. So the very first thing we're going to do is write this script which is very simply we're going to iterate through a list of assets that we're going to populate by writing. So we're going to write this while loop. We'll say asset and inside here we'll say loop. So while asset loop in here let's specify some assets that we're interested in. So some of the majors which are euro dollar, pound dollar, US dollar, Japanese yen, let's say those are the three majors of interest to us out of the longer list of majors, and also the Apple stock. So just so we have four assets to deal with, we're going to see what happens when we populate, uh, when we try to fetch the latest closing price for any of these assets. In order to do that, all we're going to do is very simply write this printf statement whereby we'll print a new line and say, well, the latest um, closing price of whatever asset that is inside that is being iterated through at this point in time is %.5f, meaning we format it to five decimal places. And after that, we call the price close function, which will essentially return the latest closing price for the asset being looped through and print it to the screen. And that's it. There's our Technically, it's a bit more than three lines. So there's one, two, three, four, five. If you count all the braces and all the other braces through to the function run, but effectively is maybe two lines of code inside of which we have chosen the assets that we wish to loop through in order to get the closing price. But what we're actually doing is leveraging Zorro because Zorro is going to go away in the background and fetch all that other information that we discussed in the first part of this tutorial series and store it in its log directory that we're going to go into shortly. So first let's save the script and that's been saved as underscore new.csc. So let's save that as something else. Let's save it as dwx underscore update underscore assets dot c. So now we have that file and it should be accessible from within our script menu over here, like so. Now that we have this script selected, and remember we deleted everything from our assets fix.csv, so we don't have anything in the instrument menu over here. For those of you who are familiar with Zorro, you'll know that this is pre-populated with anything that is available inside assets fix.csv, the instrument list. But since we don't have those symbols in there, we deleted them, we don't have anything in here either. Now what we're going to do is we're going to get the latest closing price for these four assets that are in our loop, but Zorro will go away in the background and start fetching all the related information for those assets as well. So we have the EA deployed on our uh, MetaTrader terminal, as, as you can see, uh, the latest closing price as the assets are being iterated through is being printed to the screen. And that's it. We don't really need to do anything else with this script. All those assets have been looped through. I really should have printed the asset name as well, but uh, as we can tell from the variation in the prices that all four assets have been successfully looped through. So we can stop this script which we have. It wasn't trading to begin with. But now is where the important stuff happens. So Zorro in the background has gone away and fetched all the necessary information about those assets in addition to the closing price. 
and it has stored it inside its log directory over here in a file called assets.csv. You'll find that the timestamp is what the time is right now, which is exactly 12.31 a.m. If we go inside assets.csv now, you'll find that the assets that we were looking for uh, closing prices to have been populated in here inside this assets.csv file with the relevant information. As always, if you enjoyed this presentation, please do consider sharing it with your social networks, colleagues, co-workers and friends. And do subscribe to the DarwinX YouTube channel so you remain up to date with all future videos that will be released in this series and other topics discussed on DarwinX. Thank you very much for your attention. See you next time.